In this video, we'll discuss how food comes from our farms to our plates. Let's begin with a simple case study. Here's a plate of food. This is Ankit's plate. It has a lot of different items. Don't you think all these different items came from different farms across the country? Right? Let's say Ankit lives in um, somewhere in West Bengal and this is his plate and Ankit is the consumer of this food. Now, if you think about it, don't you think these parante on his plate, they were made with wheat and wheat doesn't grow much in West Bengal. Let's say the wheat had to be transported from a farm which was somewhere in Haryana. Okay, so uh, the wheat had to travel a distance from the farm to Ankit, who is the consumer, right? So this distance is basically called food miles. So the food miles for wheat in this particular example is around 1800 kilometers, which is the distance between the farm and Ankit. Okay, yes, of course, I'm writing them in kilometers and uh, though the word says miles, I'm still going to stick to metric units. Okay, so uh, let's take another example and try to analyze this a little more. Let's say we take the example of uh, Nisha who is sitting in Madurai and Nisha is eating apples in Madurai. Okay, we know that apples don't grow in South India. And so most probably these apples came from somewhere up north, maybe from JNK or maybe from Himachal, right? So here's an apple orchard, maybe somewhere in Kashmir or Himachal. And this is our source. This is our farm where the apple is being grown, right? And if we zoom out, we'll get an idea of how far the apple had to travel. The apple had to travel the length of the country. Maybe the apples first came down to Chennai where there was a go-down and then they traveled further down to Madurai, right? That's a long distance, right? And the food miles in this scenario is going to be greater. It's approximately 3,200 kilometers. That's a long distance for an apple to travel, isn't it? So what's the big deal with, uh, you know, food traveling such large distances? Don't you think the truck in which the, these apples were transported would have caused some pollution on the way, right? And don't you think some of the apples would have gotten rotten or spoiled or stale as they traveled such a large distance to reach the consumer, right? So these are some of the issues with having very large food miles. Okay, now let's move on to another example. This time, let's uh, talk about Alyssa sitting in the US and preparing rice. Now, Alyssa is the consumer. Rice doesn't grow in the US too much, and the US imports a lot of its rice from the eastern part of the world. India, China, Thailand, and Vietnam, all these countries export rice to the US, right? So the rice came most probably from some uh, field like this, and uh, this is how the farm looks like. Now let's zoom out and see how far this rice has had to travel to reach Alyssa in the US. So the rice maybe let's say started from Thailand and it made its way all the way to the US by sea. So the distance in this entire uh, trip is pretty large so the food miles is on also going to be large. The food miles here are about 15,000 kilometers. It could even be 20,000 kilometers depending on what route was taken by the ship and all of those things, right? So uh, again, the same issue, the ship would have caused a lot of pollution on the way, even let's say if it took some shortcut through the Suez Canal, it would have caused some amount of pollution. And uh, that is not too good, right? Okay, now let's come to our last example. Here's our last example, case four. Here we've got Anushka, let's say she is uh, living in Mumbai and she loves eating Swiss chocolates or German chocolates and she here is our consumer. Now Swiss chocolates and German chocolates as the name suggests are most probably going to come from Switzerland and Germany so there is our manufacturing plant in let's say Switzerland. Okay, So here's where the manufacture happens. Now there's something interesting here, though Switzerland is very famous for chocolates Cocoa beans, which is the base ingredient for chocolates, doesn't even grow in Switzerland. It doesn't even grow in any of the neighboring countries here, right? So all these countries, Switzerland, Germany, maybe Belgium, they have to import cocoa beans from halfway across the world. 
right? So cocoa beans is something that grows in tropical regions. And so Ecuador, Brazil, Ivory Coast, and Ghana are some of the large producers and exporters. Ivory Coast is the largest producer of cocoa beans in the world. So uh, the cocoa beans actually comes from this region. Let me show you a picture of a cocoa beans tree. Here is a cocoa beans tree, and that is our cultivator. Now, if you think about it, let's zoom out and look at the larger picture. Our cultivators are somewhere there. Uh, I mean, the yellow parts are all our cultivators. The red portion is where our manufacturers are. So all the cocoa beans have to travel to the manufacturer. And from there, it travels to our consumer sitting in India. If you look at the story as well, you'd realize that the food miles on the chocolate is really large. Some of the ingredients would have traveled uh, approximately 16,000 kilometers to reach the final consumer. So uh, the other thing in this entire story is that the transport of chocolates from Switzerland to India could have been by air because the sea route would have been way too long and the land route has way too many borders. So there's a high chance that it was actually flown into India from Switzerland and uh, air travel causes a lot of pollution to the atmosphere. So uh, the, the entire story cut short, let's answer the big question, why do food, food miles matter? Let's summarize, carbon emissions is one large reason for food miles to matter because the larger distance you, you know, transport your food, the more pollution it causes and especially with air transport. Air transport's the worst. It has the largest emissions. Uh, we have lesser emissions with road, even lesser emissions with rail and the least with ships. And if you uh, actually look at it, road, rail and ship are all way, 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 way better than air. Air transport of uh, materials or even us humans causes a lot of pollution. The other issue, especially for fruits and vegetables, like we talked about Nisha eating apples, which were grown in Kashmir, uh, these fruits and vegetables can get spoiled, right? And that is also an issue. But you may be like, wait, I ate fruits and vegetables which have been imported. They've traveled 10,000 miles and uh, 10,000 kilometers, and they were perfectly crisp and fresh. Why do you say that the freshness of food is an issue? Well, if the food has traveled, you know, 10,000, 20,000 kilometers and is still fresh, there's a high chance, I won't say it is definitely that, but there is a high chance that preservatives were used. Yes, sorry to burst your bubble. So uh, in general, large food miles are bad. It's best to eat what is grown locally where you live so that you're healthy and you also keep the environment healthy. That's it for this video.